Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. My name is Sasha and today we are going to build a custom fan controller. By the end of this video we will build a custom fan controller that can individually control up to 10 fans and support external sensors. We will be able to program and control each fan from a PC or even remotely. And it will also have some cool non-standard control options that might come in handy. So let's get started. Let's begin by covering some basics and explaining the motivation for this project. Most consumer PCs have fan connectors that have 3 or 4 pins, and as the name implies, these have either 3 or 4 pins on the connector. In the 3 pin version, 2 pins are used for power, and the third pin is used to measure the speed or the RPM of the fan. The 4 pin fan is basically the same with the added fourth pin that we can use to control the speed of the fan. In this video, we are going to focus on the 4 pin version of the fan, mainly because the price difference between the two versions is becoming smaller and having the ability to easily control the speed of the fan is a huge plus for us. You probably have a computer, server, network attached storage or some other equipment that uses fans for cooling. In my case, pun intended, I have a personal PC, multiple servers and a network attached storage. All of them, in addition to having a CPU and a graphics card, they also have multiple components like hard drives, SSDs, network interfaces and so on that I would like to keep cool. The easiest way I can do this is by adding additional fans to each setup. But immediately there is a problem. We are limited by the number of fans that the motherboard can support. Usually if you need like 3, 4 or maybe 5 extra fans, your motherboard has extra fan connectors that you can use. But unfortunately that is not going to work for me. My network attached storage is going to be the worst case out of all the setups that I have. Because I will need a total of 10 extra fans for it. Not only that, but I would like to split them into zones so I can individually control them. For example, if temperatures are low, I would reduce the RPM of certain fans. Or if my hard drives are cool and not being used, I would also like to turn off some of the fans that are cooling them to reduce fan noise or extend their lifetime. Or maybe even individually balance my intake and exhaust fans to make sure that there is always a slight positive pressure in the enclosure to reduce dust buildup and so on. Obviously, having a full control over your setup is always a plus. One cheap, quick and dirty solution would be to use a fan splitter. You may have seen these around or maybe even got one with your computer case like I did. Fan splitters can be designed as a very simple cable that looks something like this or a simple board like this one. But they basically operate the same way. They take one fan connector from your motherboard and split it into multiple extra fan connectors that you can use. The biggest limitation with these is that your motherboard will still only see and control one single fan. So even though you have let's say 10 fans, you can only control and monitor one single fan and the remaining nine will copy its behavior. There are also some other issues and limitations to this solution but this already is a deal breaker for us. The next solution would be to use a digital fan controller. These can monitor and control each individual fan. This is exactly what we are looking for. But unfortunately they usually have software that doesn't work well on every operating system and also require a monitor and a mouse or a keyboard to configure them. They are almost always closed source and part of some vendor ecosystem and in most cases these are relatively expensive. Therefore I'm not a huge fan of this solution. So instead I'm going to build my own custom fan controller. And as always, everything is open source, open hardware, so you can build your own as well. While searching for components that we could use for this project, I found a EMC2305 chip. This is a 5 fan controller chip that also comes in 1, 2, 3 or 5 fan variants. It communicates over I2C bus that we can use to read each fan's RPM and also set the PWM output for each individual fan. There is also an address select pin, which we can use to set a different I2C address for each chip, so we can have multiple of these chips on the same I2C bus. For the brains of our project, we are going to use Pico 2040 microcontroller. This microcontroller is widely available, supports USB, which we can use to communicate with the host PC, and also has a built-in USB bootloader, which would allow anyone to program this fan controller, and also do a firmware upgrade without requiring any additional programmers or special tools. We also need to power our board, but more importantly, we also need to power all of our fans, which can draw a couple of amps of current when fully on. 
Luckily, inside most modern PCs, there is usually a SATA power connector that we can use for this. This is a very simple design, so there are not a lot of components here. We have a USB connector that we use for USB communication with the host PC. We have a SATA power connector that we use for powering the fan controller and all the fans. There is a voltage regulator to regulate the 12 volts down to 3.3 volts. And obviously we have our fan connectors. There are also two connectors for one wire and another I2C bus. We can use those to connect multiple external temperature probes or other sensors. So with the design complete, Let's send it to manufacturing and see how it turns out. Through the magic of video editing, it's several weeks later and we have our fully populated boards in front of us. Here is the brains of our fan controller, the Pico 2040 microcontroller. Next to it we have two EMC2305 fan controller ICs. And each one of them is controlling five individual fans that are connected to these fan connectors. On the right side of the board we have our one wire and I2C bus that we can connect external sensors to. On the left side, we have the SATA connector for powering the board and the fans, and also a micro USB connector. Now, it would be a bit weird to have the fan controller's USB cable plugged at the back of the motherboard and then route it back inside the PC case. Luckily, most motherboards have extra headers for additional USB ports. We can use this off-the-shelf cable that will convert that USB header to male micro USB connector that we can plug directly into our fan controller and keep our cabling nice and tidy. Also, these connectors are polarized on both ends, so we don't have to worry about plugging them in backwards. Now that we have the hardware all done, we still need to write some firmware that will run on the Pico 2040 and also a piece of software that will run on the PC. The full source code is available in the GitHub repo, so I won't go into details of how it works. If you really want to know more about this part, let me know down in the comments section and I will make a follow-up video that focuses on the firmware and the software part of the project. Okay, now we have to load the firmware onto Pico 2040 microcontroller. A really nice feature that I mentioned earlier is that the microcontroller comes with a built-in USB bootloader. When in bootloader mode and plugged into a PC, it will appear same as the USB flash drive on your computer. So we can easily program it just by dragging and dropping the firmware onto that drive and we are good to go. Now let's take a look at our fan controller software. The important thing to note is that the software has two key features. One is the GUI that we can use to monitor and control all of our fans. Here we can see in real time what is the RPM of each individual fan that we have. We can also control each individual fan or all of them at once. You can control the fan speed by specifying the PWM percentage or target RPM. Now this feature of controlling the fan via target RPM is a bit unusual one and probably not a lot of people will find it useful but I really like it and here is why. As an example, when you set the PWM percentage to let's say 50%, the fan will spin at 50% RPM or whatever the fan manufacturer designed it to do at that PWM percentage. So for example, if you have a 2000 RPM fan and a 3000 RPM fan, if you set them both to 50% PWM, they will not spin at the same speed. So you need to know the fan in order to drive it properly. Also over time, if fan slows down due to dust buildup, age or any other reason, the PWM will remain the same but the RPM will drop even more. However, if you control the speed by setting the target RPM to let's say 1000 RPM, the controller will try to find on its own the PWM value that results in the fan spinning at the requested RPM. This is possible because the controller has a built-in algorithm that will constantly adjust the PWM value in order to reach and maintain target RPM. So in this case, the fan controller doesn't need to know what fan you have, but it will keep it running at the target RPM all the time. So if you swap fans or they get dusty, dirty, blocked, etc., the controller will try to compensate for it. But second and maybe even more important one is that we have exposed an API that we can use from any third party app or even remotely to monitor and control all of our fans. This can come in very handy if you want to do data logging or give fan control to another application or do it remotely. Also, it comes in very handy if the machine that the fan controller is connected to does not have a monitor or you don't have physical access to it all the time. Thanks to this API, you can access it and control the fans remotely from anywhere. In my case, I have it running inside a Docker container on my server and have two other apps doing the data logging and controlling the fan curves. 
We also have these expansion ports where you can connect additional one wire or I2C sensors or other devices. I currently don't use them for anything special, but if you guys have any cool suggestions, please leave a comment to let me know. Before we wrap up this video, it's also worth mentioning that this is not the first revision of this project. I have also built a few previous versions like this one that supports 5V and 12V fans on the same board, with even more expansion ports, support for multiple addressable LED strips and so on. Now, while these may be nice features on paper, they also increase the overall cost and complexity of the project. I also suspect that not that many people would find these extra features very useful, so I removed them from this version of the project. But going back to current version, this is our fully custom fan controller. I would love to hear your thoughts or if you have suggestions for improvements, please leave them down in the comment section. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making this project. If you did, please hit that like button and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And as always, if you have reached this part of the video, thank you so much. You're amazing. That's all for today's video. Thank you all for watching. My name is Sasha and I will see you in the next video. Bye.